Well, good, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the latest in our ongoing series of artist conversations here at SAMA. I'm David Rubin, the Brown Foundation Curator of, of the Brown Foundation Curator of Contemporary Art here at the museum. And it's my pleasure tonight to welcome my guest, Ross Blechner. Welcome, Ross. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you could please remember to silence your cell phones. And before we begin, just a couple of announcements. I want to remind everyone we're going to have a wonderful uh, panel conversation uh, next week at this time, April 17th, remembering Linda Pace. Uh, it's actually on the occasion of her birthday, and I'll be holding a dialogue with her biographer, Jan Jarbo Russell, uh, with a collector who considers Linda, Linda to have been his mentor, Guillermo Nicolas, who's represented as a lender to this exhibition, and Riley Robinson, an artist and studio director at Art Pace, who was with Art Pace from the very beginning and is still there. So that will be a wonderful way to remember Linda, to celebrate her life. I hope you'll come join us for that. And then on May 29th at 6.30, I'll be holding a conversation with the African-American artist Willie Cole, whose work is also in the exhibition on loan from the Linda Pace Foundation. I also want to thank the Linda Pace Foundation for partnering with us in making this exhibition and these programs possible. So now we're going to, of course, turn all of our focus to my guest, an artist whose work I have personally admired for many, many years. And as Ross knows, I've curated it in, in, in him now, I think, into four exhibitions over the years. Uh, Ross holds a bachelor's degree from New York University, and he received his master's of fine arts degree from CalArts in Valencia, California. He had a major retrospective in 1995 at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum. He's in numerous museum collections around the country, including the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. He serves on the board of the AIDS Community Research Initiative of America. And in 2009, he was awarded the title of Goodwill, Goodwill Ambassador by the United Nations. Uh, not many artists have held that title. And then he's currently a clinical professor of studio art at New York University Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. So tonight, we're going to learn more about the art and life of an artist, as I say, who I've really had great admiration for for a long, long time. So it's a real honor for me to welcome you, Ross. So let's, let's begin by just talking a little bit <coughs> about, about your roots. Uh, you grew up on Long Island in a town called Hewlett. 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 I'm, okay. I'm looking at it here, right on the on the uh, screen. And you were making art at an early age. Well, I chose that picture. It's one of many. One of the only ones I was making art. <laughs> so I thought it was appropriate. Well, tell us a little bit, like, about when you first realized you wanted to be an artist, or were. I think um, everybody kind of knows when they are an artist. Uh, that when, they are an artist. When was that for you? Never and always, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, you go through different phases of development. I mean, I always was artistic. Uh, I always was, well, for want of better words, uh, you uh, grow up in a, a suburban area. It's a, a ULIT, just people who don't know. Um, is a small um, town that's um, like 45 minutes from New York City. Most people commute back and forth. Uh, it's a very kind of, well, I would say sterile environment to grow up in, but nevertheless, you grow up where you grow up. And uh, in that context, I considered myself to be, in quotes, a sensitive. sensitive. Uh, <laughs> and as a way to um, deal with that, I always kind of took refuge, which is actually something that artists do really through their whole lives, I think, uh, through uh, the solitary, you know, um, isolation and control that you get when you're able to really contemplate away from your environment and other people. So I mean, just as a teenager, that's uh, kind of, you know, going to art class and kind of trying to develop uh, a sense of identity. Uh, 
is what you're doing. I mean, that's what any teenager does, regardless of what profession they end up going into. So when you went to NYU, were you, taking, uh, were you there to study art? Was that your, your major? Well, no. At first, I wasn't there to study art. Um, at first, uh, I was actually there to study business. But, but that, that had to do with, again, the suburban area that I grew up in was very heavily uh, business-oriented, as was my father who was a businessman. Uh, you know, so you have that pressure. There's always, you know, I mean, that's what finding an identity is about, particularly as a teenager in an early 20s, is like, how do you um, come through all the kind of grinding pressures that surround you of society, culture, family, and self, you know? Uh, so I, I, um, when I went to NYU, I thought I had to put aside my artistic inclination to get real. But I, you know, I think everybody goes through this to some degree. I mean, and truth be told, I think it was in my, uh, my second year, I mean, I still always did it in the dorm, in my apartment, in my, you know, it just took over more and more and more of my life until you finally think to yourself, um, you know, it's also here now, the uh, early, uh, I graduated NYU in uh, the late 60s, uh, graduated CalArts in the early 70s. No, no, what so, led you to CalArts? Because it was brand new. I mean, CalArts was brand yeah, new was, at that I time. I was the first graduating class at CalArts. What led me to CalArts, I'll tell you in one second. Uh, well, I can tell you now. One of the teachers that I had at um, NYU, I think I was very intense <clears throat> because I was kind of, you know, at that time you explode with your ideas and you're in a kind of uh, quandary between how you're going to find your way and assert who you want to be regardless. And I always say this now as I teach, I mean, part of being uh, an artist, really, uh, at, the, at the beginning, particularly, is uh, to, uh, to take the responsibility for uh, the decisions that you make, no matter what the consequences are. So if you think about what the consequences could possibly be, uh, and you set the worst case scenario for yourself, I figured the worst case scenario is uh, broken homeless. <laughs> But I'm not going to be broken homeless ever.